Hello, BookTube, and welcome to Friday Reads. And uh, this week, uh, the majority of my reading had to do with the Future History Project. And that's Isaac Asimov's Future History, where myself and others, including uh, many uh, subscribers as well, uh, that are reading uh, the future history stories of Isaac Asimov. And that includes the robot stories, the empire stories, and foundation. But not only just his work, uh, we are reading other authors that have written stories, short stories, and novels within that universe. And for the most part, trying to read them uh, within the internal chronology. And it's a bit shaky at times because a lot of the short stories do not place themselves in a time period. Uh, so all we know is that they're sort of before this and after this, and then the order is a little fluid. Um, so, but uh, you can watch uh, uh, other videos of other co-hosts, which are Scott Bryant at the Bookish Bryants and Mark Richardson at Riches and Reads. And you can go directly to their channels. I'll leave links below, uh, or also you can see their videos in the playlist that I have for the Future History Project. And uh, so with that in mind, uh, the five stories that we read this week, again, were from The Complete Robot. And uh, they're written uh, from the, from the uh, 40s to um, the 70s, basically. So they're lo th that's why I say they're not chronological. But anyway, uh, they were very enjoyable, and you can see my videos uh, regarding the specific stories. Uh, this here edition, which is a nice edition, I've shown it many times. Um, it's like at least a nice cover. Uh, the paper quality is, is not the best. Uh, and this was published by Harper Voyager uh, in 2018. So it's a really nice cover. And also uh, for the... Uh, book the film, which I hope to have uh, up for tomorrow, uh, because I, I just have the uh, uh, the extras to watch, so I'll probably do that tonight and um, in the morning. And that was I uh, read uh, Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett, and this was written in twenty nine thirty, so it might have. Um, I'm not sure the history of it. It probably was serialized. Uh, and this is... Uh, what edition is this? Orion Fiction. It's Orion. And I really like the cover on that. This is a better made book, uh, even the paper, than the uh, robot book. Uh, but that was very enjoyable. Uh, that was a reread for me. And then the film. Uh, so, but we'll get to that uh, in the book to film video. Now, I finished up. I'd started uh, briefly. Uh, Isaac Asimov had written a number of autobiographies. The two big ones uh, cover his period from 1920 to 1975, I think, or thereabouts. I don't know the second volume. But I finished uh, this evening uh, the first volume in Memory Yet Green. Uh, the Autobiography of Isaac Asimov, 1920 to 1954. And uh, it's a big book. It's Well, it's just over 700 pages. So he'd, he'd written already um, in 1979. This, is 19, this was published in 1979. They, pub they did it in two volumes. Uh, this is Double Day and Company. Um, and uh, I, I found it very, very enjoyable. Uh, it's usual. It's his usual wit and uh, uh, clarity of writing. Um, it was very enjoyable. Whether you know he, you know, embellished things, left stuff out, is another question. Um, that's going to take a while before we ever know that. Uh, with uh, you know somebody else doing a, an in-depth uh, biography, let's put it that way. And uh, but that would be a lot of work. Uh, but it was, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. There was lots of little tidbits uh, about other science fiction writers, uh, about his life um, and growing up and, you know, uh, going to university 
uh, making friends, losing friends, uh, making enemies, <laughs> made a lot of enemies. Uh, not, not, you know, deep enemies, but, uh, people that, uh, either were jealous of him or, uh, you know, they just pissed them off. And, uh, interesting though, uh, that, you know, um, I don't know who the, the editors or the proofreaders, uh, of this, there, there were, I, I don't know, I, I caught just, you know, briefly about five or six mistakes in it, uh, either a re repetition of words or, um, like there was one here where I think he had the word immediately, immediately was on the next line, but then at the end of the line above, it was I am dash as if it was going to be, you know, too long for the line and put down. So I don't think it would be Im immediately. <laughs> um, so there was a few other, other things like that uh, in here. And I probably didn't, didn't even catch them all, but that's just a minor here and there, there, but, but it just goes to show that, you know, errors do crop in. And he even talked about that in, in the textbook that he was, uh, uh, involved in it's, uh, a textbook that was written on biochemistry, uh, uh, with two of his colleagues and he, they poured over it and checked and checked and checked and checked, you know, for mistakes and everything like that and as soon as it was published uh, another colleague i think picked it up opened it up and go oh you got a wrong formula in here he goes what no that's impossible and it was <laughs> that's the wrong formula and it went it, 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 three of them missed it and then the proofreader and the edit everything was missed and then in class he sort of says you know there's extra credit for anybody who finds out the mistake in there and all of a sudden they were flooded with with errors that that, that they had missed uh in in the uh in, in the book so yeah it happens <laughs> also too uh i've been reading a little bit of, of his early early asimov are the first um, 11 years of his writing and it's got biographical sketches oh there it is i had it upside down um it has a bit of biographical sketches as well as the stories. And I also read uh, one of the stories uh, out of here. Well, I actually read a couple, but uh, the main one that should have been on our list was not final. Uh, it was Chapter 18 here, published in 1941, uh, which which should have been on the list, but wasn't. Uh, also, too, very similar is this one here. Before the Golden Age, and it's like, you know, without a biographical introductions this time, um, and before the Golden Age, the early Asimov was published in 1972 by uh, Doubleday and Company, and this is Doubleday and Company as well, but 1974, and whereas this has introductions, the early Asimov as uh, sort of post, like after the story, it's got the information um, the autobiographical information, and it's always interesting. Some of it is almost verbatim of what's in here in in the uh, first autobiographical volume. So he just recycled some material. Uh, yeah. So that's that was my reading week. That's what I read this week. Uh, now for next week, uh, I'm well. I'm going to continue with five more stories from uh, the the uh, complete robot. So I'll be continuing with that. And for the uh, book to film will be Burnt Offerings uh, by Robert uh, Marasco. I don't think that, I don't know if that's pronounced correctly. And this was originally published in uh, 1973. And this is Valancourt uh, Books. Uh, edition from uh, 2015 and uh, it's got a new introduction by Stephen Graham Jones uh, it's a horror sort of ghost film uh, it's one of it's 97 it's Karen Black um, oh I just had his name but anyway um, a lot of actors Burgess Meredith is on it and it's one of the 70s uh, ones that I've always kind of liked. It has, um, you know, it has its faults, but uh, I've not read the book. So this will be the first time. Um, and 
as uh, it's well, it says uh, the basis for a classic 1976 film uh, adaptation and an acknowledged influence on Stephen King's The Shining. Um, uh, the Burn Offerings is one of the most original and scariest haunted house novels ever written. Uh, this edition, the first in decades, features a new introduction and award-winning author Stephen Graham Jones. So, yeah, that's well, so there it is, a haunted house uh, film. Now, as I say, Asimov wrote other, other uh, well, it's for a third autobiography is I, Asimov. Uh, this is more... Uh, sort of topic based so each chapter so but I'm going to read through uh, some of this later because I will be doing some videos specifically on topics that he that he uh, chooses here and it's um, mostly um, well the ones that I'll be doing will be mostly uh, the authors and uh, that he, that he deals with like I'll lump a few together. It's like 166 chapters, so there's a lot of material. But it, as I say, it is it is based on um, topics rather than chronological the way the previous autobiographies were. And this was one. It's been a good life that was put out. This is the fourth volume, put out by uh, his widow um, Janet Asimov after he died. And it covers the same ground as all the others, for the most part. Uh, but there are snippets of letters and material, so I'll continue reading that this week as a supplement. And also, too, a very sort of lukewarm, um, or at least seems to be so far. I haven't got very far in. I sort of end, uh, left it because I was sort of reading back and forth with the first volume, but after... The initial uh, sort of disappointment in this, um, I'll leave it for a while, but I'll I'll, I'll pick it up uh, this week and read up to the end of 1954 in here. And this is Asimov: An Unauthorized Life by Michael White. And as I say, I, I, like I haven't read it fully yet, so I am reserving full judgment until I do. But so far. All it is is just a very condensation, condensed, condensed version of the uh, first volume, and there's no additional research that is evident uh, in it because he he brings out no mention of that, uh, nothing that he's checked this record and that and found that that either Asimov was right or incorrect in his memories for whatever reason. None of that so far, so we'll have to wait and see. Oh, oh and there's another one that's called uh, Astounding by uh, Alec Novella Lee, which I'll be starting to get into as well. I've read most of that uh, in the past, but I'll read it right from cover to cover now uh, as well. So uh, whether I'll start that next week is another question. I might reserve that for the week after. But yeah, there's my uh, Friday reads this week. Uh, what the date today it's uh friday january 14th so i'll get this up now and it'll be just in time for uh friday reads or well yeah before it turns to saturday here in the uk and i hope everybody has a good weekend and i will talk to you soon booktube